Hello, hello. Hope you are all are doing well. I'm leading a photography workshop to Hawaii. I leave on Monday and I'm going through my camera bag, reorganizing and basically making sure I've got everything that I'm going to need for two weeks of amazing photography all over the islands of Hawaii. And I wanted to use this opportunity since I was going through everything anyway to just show you what I take in my bag when I travel. The first thing that I wanted to show you is my, my backpack and I have two backpacks. I have a Shimoda that's a very, very large one. I use that when I'm going someplace cold and I've got to have clothes and jackets and layers and extra stuff if I'm hiking a long distance. For this trip, I'm not going to be doing any of that. I'm going to be basically going very short, not even hikes, but very short walks from location to where we're going to shoot on a beach and then back. So this is my backpack of choice. This is a mind shift backlight 26 liter backpack. And I love this backpack for a lot of reasons, but the main reason I like it, especially if I'm shooting at the coast or around water or um, a place where I don't want to have to walk back to my bag to get it. This is my favorite feature of this bag. And I wish the Shimoda did this because then the Shimoda would be, I think, even better than it is. But this allows you to take the backpack while it's still on you, swing it around to your front, and then you can just zip it open like this. And then you can get into the bag very, very simply, get what you need, change a lens, you get a filter, get a battery, get a lens cloth, you get done, you just do it like this. And then you can just spin it back around and it's back on your back. This is really, really nice. Again, when you're, when you're shooting in a location where it's precarious, maybe water, you don't want to, you know, just set your bag down on the beach and then a wave come in and hit it, a big, a rogue wave or something. So this allows you to easily travel with it. It's comfortable. It's got all the right straps on it. It's got plenty of pockets. It's got plenty of space. And uh, this is the one that I'll be taking. I want to put everything you see on this table is going to go in this bag. So the next thing is my tripods. I wanted to show you those and kind of get those out of the way. This is uh, my, my, one of my vlogging cameras. This is an Osmo Action. It's a GoPro style and they really messed up, I think, on the new one that they released because it's, it's just not as... I don't know. I don't like the new one that they, uh, the Action 2, I believe is what this is. This is the original one and I absolutely love it. It's waterproof without a case. It's voice activated when it's on. I can say start recording, stop recording. It does 4K. It does um, slow motion. Uh, it connects to my phone so I can even control it and see the field of view with my phone. So if it's in a place that's kind of weird, I can just say connect to it and I can see exactly what the camera sees. And then I can just say start recording and it starts recording. It's absolutely fantastic. This little tripod has bendable legs, which is really, really nice uh, to allow me to strap it to a, a log, a tree, a branch, anything that I might need. Um, and then I've also, it's got a little ball head that allows me to adjust it as well. So this little thing is absolutely fantastic for, for vlogging. This is my other small tripod. This is an old beat up, um, it's carbon fiber. It's got the, the lever locks, I should say. And I use this for the camera that you're, that I'm filming on right now. It usually sits on this if I am vlogging on that. So this is my other vlogging tripod that I can get really tall. This is my main tripod. If you haven't seen the video, um, I'll link to it above. But this one is my favorite tripod of all times. This is my uh, iFootage Gazelle TC6S. And it's an uprise is the model and this one is fantastic it's got a really right stuff ball head on it that is absolutely perfect i love this setup in every way possible it's, it's fantastic 
So next let's talk cameras. What do I bring? Well, I bring my main camera, which is my Sony A7R4. Uh, this is my main camera, and then I have a uh, 16 to 35 on it right now. It's the 2.8, because I will be doing astrophotography, probably at on Haleakala at night uh, on Maui. And I also always, always bring, when I travel, I always bring a backup body. I've actually seen clients lose their camera sitting on a tripod, and it falls off a cliff or uh, it gets smashed with a wave and gets totally ruined because of the salt water. If you're traveling someplace that's epic once in a lifetime, you don't want to end up there with one camera body. Something happens, even if it just mechanically breaks, with no place to fix it and no way to take photographs. So I take a backup body. This is a Sony a7R III. Uh, it's a great camera, and as a backup, it's absolutely uh, fantastic, and it's small, it's light, and I wouldn't leave home when I travel without it. My other lenses that I always take with me, it's the, kind of the holy trinity of landscape lenses. You've seen the videos, the one must-have lens for landscape photography. There is no one must-have. There's a lot of need. Uh, there's a lot of lenses that are necessary, I think. There's not just one. So uh, the 16 to 35 is my, for my wide angle stuff. Then I have a 24 to 105. This is an F4 lens, this fantastic lens that I'll be bringing with me. And then I have a telephoto lens. This is my Sony 100 to 400 millimeter uh, telephoto uh, lens. This is gonna be really, excellent for any type of, if I shoot uh, birds out on the coast around some of the lighthouses, if I am reaching, doing a long shot to reach some waves that are crashing, you know, down the coast. Um, some of the waterfalls that I'll be shooting, you may not be able to get right up to. You have to, there's, they might be a little bit further away. So if you've got a wide, wide angle or only a hundred millimeters, you may not be able to reach. Again, when you travel, you don't want to get there and go, man, I should have brought my 200 millimeter because this is just not quite enough. So I'm definitely going to be taking all three of these lenses with me. So for filters, I know a lot of, a lot of landscape photographers use the graduated filters and uh, I don't, I don't, I stopped using those long, long time ago. And everything that I have right now, my filter system is very, very simple. I use the Freewell magnetic filter system. I'll link to the video where I review that right up here. It's wonderful. I think it's a great, great system. And uh, I basically, on each one of my lenses, I keep, it's a magnetic lens cap, and then I've got a circular polarizer on my uh, 24 to 105 and one on my 16 to 35. I have a couple of neutral density filters in here. I have a 10 stop so that if I really want to slow that motion that I've got that. And again, it's magnetic. It just clips on. So all of my filters fit in this little bitty pouch and they just magnetically snap on to the front of my lenses. It's fantastic. And I don't have to take those big bulky uh, glass, you know, those graduated filters with all those big giant cumbersome attachments to the front of the lens and try to fumble with that on the beach or you know at the base of a waterfall i can just clip these on so obviously i take extra batteries i don't take a ton of batteries when i travel because I'm, i've got access to power every night so i've got a battery in each of my cameras and then i've got two more that's more than enough i'll be able to charge every single night memory cards i have this little uh think tank memory card holder it's awesome it's super small and it allow it holds a bunch of cards. You just slop, slide them into the little little slots, and the, because my my photos are the way I make my living, I can't wait till I get home and just hope that there's nothing wrong with the memory card. So every day, at the end of every day, I take the memory card out of the camera and then I download it. I bring a laptop and I download that to make a backup of it. And so in addition to having on the memory card, I've also got a, already got a backup of, it, a backup of the photographs 
on my laptop as well. So I make sure that I have enough memory cards to last for the entire trip without having to format over any of them. I want to always have a memory card with the photos and a backup of them on my laptop. Now one item you might not think to bring, or if you're a beginner, you bring all the time, and that is a camera strap. Now I bring a, I do not use a camera strap 95% of the time. It gets in the way, it's flapping in the wind, uh, and it's just, a, it's an aggravation when I've got a tripod. But I'm gonna be doing whale photography. We're gonna be going out in Maui, we're gonna be going on these, these inflatable boats to whale watch. And that's another reason I'll be needing this 100 to 400 lens is to capture those whales as they breach and the flukes and everything else. I'm not going to have a tripod with me and I'm going to be on a boat that's at sea. I don't want to be just hand holding a camera that costs as much money with a very expensive lens on it and it fall overboard if I trip or something happens. So I'm going to have a camera strap that I bring with me. And if you don't know about Peak Design, they make the best straps and the best system for attaching stuff to your camera uh, or your backpacks as that I've ever seen. It's got these small little discs that uh, you can easily attach to your camera and then to attach it to a tripod, I mean to a, to a strap, you do this with just one hand, and it's on. It's not gonna fall off, it can't come off. Uh, I have had zero issues with these and they're absolutely fantastic and I just took it off. So it's not a matter of having to thread the the strap on, how big of a pain that is, this is, takes seconds to add the strap or to take it off. Go to Peak Design and get one. It's fantastic. Anytime that you're going to be shooting uh, at the coast, anywhere, that, or even if it's possibly going to rain, your gear could get wet. Uh, I bought a bunch of these little dry, these are silica gel, these are dry and dry bags. So if you look at it, it's just a little bag of those little beads. When you buy something new and it comes in the mail, you usually have to pick some of these out but um, I got a big bag of them and I just keep a bunch of these little packs in my camera bag. And it basically helps absorb moisture. I, I'm gonna wipe my camera and all my gear off before I put it up, but just to help absorb any moisture that might be prevalent in the bag, if it got moist or damp, this is gonna help protect my gear and absorb any of that moisture as it's zipped up and stuck in that bag. I know a lot of you are probably <clears throat> uh, worried anytime it rains, you're out in the field, you're out taking photographs, and if it gets rain or if you're at a waterfall and things start getting a little misty about your camera getting wet and breaking. And I've seen a lot of photographers use those super complicated rain sleeves you put on the camera and you put your arms inside and you put in your head. I think those are awful. I can't even imagine trying to use anything as complicated as that. And so I have this super high tech way of protecting my camera when I'm not using it. If I'm in a situation where it's raining or it's spray from a waterfall or is there a chance it could get wet for an extended amount of time. And that is this. This is a shower cap. It costs about 50 cents. You can buy it at any store, any drug store, any grocery store. And it's sitting on the tripod. All I have to do is is that and my camera is totally 100 percent protected just like that and i can let it sit on the tripod if it's raining or whatever might be happening while i'm waiting for the light to get good and i don't have to worry about it when i want to shoot i'm ready to go and this can go in my pocket or back in my bag not a problem another thing that i think is absolutely indispensable in your camera bag besides your camera are some type of microfibers and that's just to wipe down your your camera for any water or you know keeping your lens clean taking a couple of these they weigh nothing and they can easily fit in your bag so this next thing is not a must-have but for me it is and i don't even know what you would call it i think it's like a a camp pad uh, I got this off, uh, you know, from Amazon, and if you're old like me and your knees hurt like mine and your, your butt goes to sleep if you're sitting on a rock or a hard log, this will make your life happy because it is, uh, it's like a sponge uh, foam material, super durable, doesn't tear, and it's pretty much waterproof 
water resistant, I would say. But if you have to kneel down on anything that's hard, you can either make it, you know, small enough for, you know, a knee, or you can make it big enough for you, like for you to sit on if you're sitting on a rock or something that's hard, or if it's really dirty um, or muddy, this will help protect you and keep you a little bit more comfortable. And again, it weighs pretty much nothing. Another thing you want to always, always travel with is a some type of a blower. I highly recommend having one of these. It's It doesn't weigh much, it's pretty small, and it can save the day so you're not having to edit out that strand of hair or that little piece of uh, you know dust that gets on your sensor if you don't have it so i always carry one of these when i is in my bag another thing you want to make sure you bring as a landscape photographer is some type of light so i have a flashlight that runs on triple a's it's led it lasts forever and it's also good for light painting it's got a, a the ability to change the the beam from a narrow to a wider beam which is really really nice and then Everybody needs to at least have this, and this is super important, a headlamp. And also, you want to make sure if you get one of these, that you have one that has a red light on it. And that is just super important, especially if you're doing any type of night photography, because it won't ruin your night vision or aggravate other photographers that might be in the area. Just a couple more things that I always keep in my bag. And uh, one of these is my Garmin InReach Mini. This is a satellite-based communication device that allows me to send text messages or to send an SOS if I were to get hurt or someone else were to be hurt and I don't have cell service. This is a way that I can, no matter where I'm at, as long as I've got, I can see the sky, I can uh, call for help with this or send text messages to let uh, you know, designated people know where I'm at and if I'm on my way back and just be able to communicate. Uh, this little bitty thing is something that I used to not keep in my backpack all the time until I went to Yellowstone and realized that there are six trillion mosquitoes for every square feet of airspace. Uh, in the mornings, I literally got eaten alive. It wasn't that it was cold. I had to keep jackets and gloves on and a hat on with a hood because the sheer number of mosquitoes that were lighting on my hands was unbelievable. So now I always carry this little B, um, it's Ben's Ultranet, it's a bug net, goes over your hat, allows you to see, keeps all the bugs off of your face. I carry this no matter when or where I go, it just stays in my bag all the time. And the last thing is, for your tripod, those legs, anything, um, your, your plate for your camera on the bottom, you need a way to be able to tighten those up if things get loose. This little um, is a multi uh, bit to have different hex keys on it at the bottom and different screwdrivers on the other end to allow you to do any kind of adjustments or just tighten things up. Again, super small, lightweight, and that's always in my bag as well. If you've never been on a photography workshop, I highly recommend that you do so. It is an incredible experience for a number of reasons. I've both been on workshops as a participant and I've also led workshops. The great thing about attending a workshop, besides that synergy and meeting other photographers, is the fact you're guaranteed to come away with some amazing photographs. And the reason that is, is the person running the workshop or the company or the group that's running the workshop has done all of the hard work for you. They know the best places to go. They know the right times to be there. They've taken care of the transportation. And all you have to do is step out of the car, follow the leader, and set up your camera, and you're gonna come away with some incredible photographs. All of the workshops that I lead are all inclusive with the, with the exception of your airfare to get where you're going, and I'll pick you up there, and your food. So your, everything else is covered. If there's an entrance fee to a park, the rental cars are covered, the gas is covered, all of the instruction is covered, all of the post-processing, uh, teaching that that I do is all included in the cost and we always stay in, in hotels we're not going to houses I'll you know vacation rental homes 
or a hotel, depends on where we go. Um, my workshops, we do not camp. We're not going to be camping. We're going to be staying in a heated or air conditioned location every time. Um, and it's just a great experience to get out someplace you've never been and and learn and be like a sponge and just soak it up because you're not going to be learning just from me. You're also going to be learning from the other photographers there because there's all skill levels. It doesn't matter if you just picked up a camera and you're learning or you've been doing it forever. I have all walks of life and all different levels of experience that come on my workshops and they all come away with amazing photographs. So take a look at my website and see the workshops that I've got coming up for 2022. Shoot me an email, let me know if you're interested and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So I hope you liked the video, got something out of it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. And stay tuned because I'm going to have a lot of video after I get back from Hawaii covering the islands of Kauai, Maui, and the Big Island of Hawaii. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.